Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Demon Lock devlog. That's the name that we ultimately decided on. Today, I don't have Caleb with me. Well, he's actually here in the room, but he's not going to be part of this devlog because it's going to be more of a technical devlog. So I'm going to start off giving you a little bit of a rundown of the calendar, and I'm going to then give you a general overview well, I'm going to show you the game too and some of the polish and stuff we did. Then I'm going to give you a general overview of how I structured the code. And then I'm going to go into a little bit more details and show off some of the code. And obviously I can't explain everything in detail, but you should get a pretty good idea of how I programmed this. I've had a lot of people asking about how I did the code and that makes sense considering, well, considering my channel is usually tutorial videos and so a lot of my audience is going to be interested in how I accomplish these things. So let's get started. Let's go to the calendar first here. So you can see in our calendar we're doing pretty well. We've got a lot of the tasks that we had set out completed and I'm supposed to be polishing the battle system. Last week I got a lot of the features in. This week I decided to polish a lot of those features because the product needs to feel good. It needs to feel really good to play it. You can't just have the features, they have to feel like features. And so I'm actually late on this. I've been working on, although I'm getting close for the attack frame on each demon, so I've been doing this as well, but I'm late on polishing the battle system. There's some things that I need to do here that I haven't accomplished yet. So I'm going to be finishing those and trying to get more of the demons. I actually did all of these and two of these. So I only have three left to do there. Let's look at some of the polish that I actually did. And Caleb's been uh, focusing on the music again since we made a change there and the game feel has a different feel to it. So here's some of the polish that I did. If we come in, you can see our game has a little bit of a blur vignette around the edges and there's actually a vignette as well. And if I come into battle, we've got some nice battle animations on the different monsters, the different demons. And they have animations for the attack. So here's like a scrape attack. And here is a pounce. This one, what this does is an action can have multiple effects. So this one, first I was just testing the multiple effects thing. So if this one first raises its attack, then deals some damage and then lowers the defense. So Pounce is actually really, really broken. It's way too strong. And look how much Scratch is going to do now after one Pounce, but... Okay, I'm going to try and get another a creature with a different move. I think this one has... Catch that one. Catch this one as well. Currently the catching system doesn't work how it's supposed to. So you can just catch as many as you want. I think some of these have different moves. I don't remember what the moves are for. I think this one has a move that we can show. Yeah, so this one has bite. And so you can see this will have a slightly different animation. The creature will always do the same animation, but there's a different effect that plays over it. So here we can see, got a nice bite effect there and uh, there we go so the battles feel quite a bit nicer our help up got bite now and there's still a lot of polish that we need to do but I'm pretty happy with how this looks so far in the direction that we're going with it so here is one of the animations here we tried to keep these as simple as possible because for the base scope, we only have 10 demons scoped out, but we would like to do more if we potentially can. Uh, we'll just do the 10 first and then add more if we have time for it. In order to try and keep things as simple as possible, I did a simple four frame idle animation. And these idle animations basically involve the head moving down, the shoulders moving down, the head moving up, and then the shoulders moving up across four frames with some little details here and there to help it feel more lifelike. But overall, it's pretty easy to do these idle animations. Then we have one frame, which is like an, an anticipation frame where they're moving towards to do the attack. And then we have another frame, which is the attack frame. 
So attacks only have two frames, and it's a pretty big jump here. Uh, but because the attacks happen fairly quickly in battle, it still looks pretty nice. And we took inspiration from Darkest Dungeon here a little bit for these, for the battle animations. And we've got kind of a parallax on the backgrounds and also a, a little zoom with the camera. And that's not too hard to do. I just use a tween on our battle camera. If we open up the battle camera here. You can see I'm just, I'm just, uh, I have a focus right, a focus center, and a focus left function on the battle camera. And each of these, each of these functions interpolates the camera uh, properties. So we interpolate the position and the zoom. And we just basically uh, move to the right in this case. And this is a constant I have set up here. So we move to the right. And we give it a duration for how long we want it to take. And then we zoom in and how long it's going to take as well there. So that's how the battle, the battle stuff works. Let's talk about the actual data here. And I've got a Wacom tablet and this screen so that we can kind of talk about it visually. So the game has three main types of, well, let's see. There's a few different types of data, but the main ones are you have demons. And demons have actions. And then you have trainers. And this data I have set up as a resource. So a resource in Godot is kind of like a scriptable object. So if we come back in here, we come over into my files here, we can look up uh, monsters, which are just demons. And we come into the monster.gd, and this is a resource. This script inherits from a resource. And then you can see the data about this demon. So it has a name, has a texture, uh, which is basically for animations. It has stats, it has actions that it learns, and actions it has more stats here, and um, status effects. And once you have this data set up, like this with a class name monster. I can just right click here and do new resource, start typing monster, and I can create a new monster. So this will be devlog monster. We'll call it devlog demon. Here we go. And you can see that appears here as a TRS. And then I can click on this and I can edit it. You can name it devlog. And we can give it a texture. We can just give it this texture for now from one of my other demons. Give it a base health of like 100. Give it a speed of fast. Base defense. Any actions that I, that I want to give it. This is an array, so I can give it as many actions as I want. I could come over here to my actions. I could drag over bite and gouge. Give it pounce. So we can give it these different actions over here and then it can use them in battle. So this is just the data for this, for this demon. I give it a next form, actions that it learns, stuff like that, okay? So once I have the data, then this data needs to be able to talk to other places. So if we come into Krita here, we have our demon, right? And this demon, we'll put one down here, As data. Now whenever that data changes, it's going to send out a signal. And this signal says something changed. So let's say our health changed. So HP change. Okay, so whenever the HP of our demon changed, it sends out a signal. And this signal gets broadcast just kind of like, it just gets sent out. And we don't know who's going to get it, but if somebody does get it, then they can do something with it. So let's say we have a UI element like our, uh, our demon's health bar. And this is connected 
to the HP change signal. So when our demon, whenever a demon's HP is changed, then this health bar can do something with that information. It can say, okay, then let's update the health bar. Okay. And at a base level, this is how the entire game functions. I have data for demons, actions, and trainers, and those, that, th those different bits of data have signals, and the different elements in the game connect into those signals and do stuff when those signals are fired. So that's, that's how it works at a basic level. So let's look at that in practice, how it looks in code. So we're gonna open up my battle, my battle scene here. Actually, let's not do the battle scene. Let's do something a little bit simpler. Let's open up, well, yeah, let's go into the battle scene, but instead of actually doing something from the battle scene, so you can see here the battle scene has uh, a lot of stuff in it. It's got, we've got a player monster UI. Now this, this right here is actually just a scene for representing the monster data. And so this scene right here, it just represents the monster's data. And then it does manage, it does manage that data some, like if a monster uses an attack or whatever, it has the animations associated with that. So this right here, you can see this scene, we have a sprite, a stat buff sprite, which these two things will be removed here. It's just gonna be a monster and an animation player. The animation player is used for when that, that monster or that demon does something, right? Does an actual animation. So if we come back into our battle here and we come on to player stats UI. Yeah, here we go. So this is just a monster stats UI and it basically just has a sprite and some different um, like the health bar here, the level, and the name, right? So this is the UI for the monster. If we come into this, you can see that it has a variable on it called monster. And this variable has a setter and a getter. And whenever this variable changes, it calls set monster. So when you set the monster inside of monster stat, UI, stats UI, what it does is it updates this to be the monster that you set it to, and then it connects to the different signals that it needs to connect to. So we're connecting to the health changed, the max health changed, and the level changed. And if you come into here again, you can see we need to know when, the monster's name won't change, but we need to know when its level changes and when its health changes so that we can update those two things properly in the UI. So now, when we connect to those signals, I have an update monster stats UI, which just updates each one individually, right? Update name, update level, update health bar. So when we update the name, we just find our label here for the name. And then we check to make sure our monster is actually a monster because it could be null. So this is kind of like the opposite of a null check, but it's better to do it this way in my opinion. And then we update the text. So basically when we set monster on our UI here, it's going to update this UI to properly represent that monster, okay? And if you come into something like monsters menu right here, this right here, uh, this menu is for displaying our monster list in the overworld. So if we've caught a few different monsters, it will display those monsters in this list. And it works functionally the exact same. It's a little bit more complicated, but functionally it works the same, where we have access to a player right here. And the player has a... Uh, a data which is monst uh, your current monsters. 
basically a party, player.party, and it displays that data properly. So whatever whatever is in the player's party, it will then take that and display. So here we only have one monster in the player's party, but if we come and we catch another one, two more actually, we'll catch two more. Then we come back into here, we can see we have both of those monsters as well. So it displays both of those demons as well. So it displays whatever data that it has. And so really there's just kind of like a data in the back end and then there's a UI that that displays that data properly. And that's kind of the model that I've been trying to use. And this code is not the cleanest still. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how the code's turned out, but we've still been trying to make an entire game in two months. And so we're kind of, I'm kind of programming like it's a game jam. And so I've been trying to do a little bit of refactoring here and there, but it still gets messy sometimes. You, you know, when you're in game jam mode, it's about getting it to work rather than getting it to be perfect. And that has shown in some places here. But overall, it hasn't been too hard to manage, and I've been able to resolve bugs fairly quickly for the most part. There have been a few tricky ones, but most of them have been pretty easy because I've been using this kind of overall structure. So once again, the structure is you have some sort of data like this. Whenever that data gets changed, you emit a signal that the data has changed. And then anything that is connected to that signal could be multiple different things. We don't care how many there are. They show the change. And they are responsible for connecting to this signal. So they determine whether or not they should be connected to this signal right here. And then what happens when they get the signal? They each determine that. And that's the model that I've been following, and it's worked out pretty well. So here we'll come back to our battle UI again. And inside of here, uh, the very first thing I do in the battle UI, in the ready function, is I get access to the enemy trainer and then the player. And I get both of their active monsters. And trainers have a function for getting the active monster. And then I update the monsters. And update monsters calls update player monster, update enemy monster. And you can see all it does is it goes through the different UI elements right here. So player monster UI, uh, well, let's see right here. Player monster UI dot monster player monster stats UI dot monster, player monster energy UI dot monster, and it just updates them. And if, I mean, if you remember the, the, each of these things works like we saw with the stats here. They all work the same. Once their monster variable gets changed, they update their own selves to reflect that new monster. So in the battle, I'm just telling, I'm just setting their monster to be whatever monster they need to be set to at the start of the battle. And once it does that, it just updates the data and properly displays the monster. So help up is the active monster for the player and it properly gets displayed here, properly gets displayed here. I get the proper actions because this all has a monster as well. And once it gets updated, I set those. And so, this system has worked out pretty well for me. I thought I would kind of describe it for you guys since you guys have been asking about it. You all have been asking about how I did this. Hopefully this helped answer your questions. If you have any more, uh, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to do my best to explain. Obviously, once again, it's quite a bit of code. I can't explain it all in exact detail, but this should give you a general idea for how I'm going about programming this project. Thank you so much for watching this devlog, and even though it was a little bit different, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to you all later.